introduced Mrs. John Lewis to my manuscript. And that was not the autobiography, though. That was the first novel, which is Fees of Death. Fees of Death. Yes, I wrote three novels while in prison and the autobiography. So I wrote four pieces. But at the time when I was doing Fees of Death, Mr. Corbin, he was in charge of security at the time. And he asked me, what are you doing now? And, and so on, how long, how short time you have in prison? I said, I have two more years. But, and he asked me what I'm doing, tell him into writing. And he said he would introduce me to Mrs. Jan Lewis. And she was a librarian, a very nice lady. And she took it home, read it, and when she came out, she was fascinated with it, thank God. And she told me, um, I must seek to get this book published, wow. you know? And she then invited me then to a lecture within prison about writers and so on, and, and the avenues to take. And then she told me, well, Mark, we don't know if they're going to deal with that much paperbacks now because the world is doing technology. Mm -hmm. You can also try uh, the online set version of, of books. So I came home with that knowledge along with other things I was reading. And I, I think I came home, you know, you know, some people may think you may come home backward or 10 years behind because of being in prison, but I, I came home ad, with that advanced thinking, you know, five years ahead of thinking. And I, do, I, mean, I really came home, it was so fascinating because I didn't see much people that maybe had the idea that I had. And the idea of, of writing fiction, something that I didn't really see as a, 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 a developed art in the country. Mm -hmm. And I think that my experience from reading these wonderful authors in, in these international countries that have written these books, the true stories of their countries, just like Martina Cole mm -hmm. and James Patterson and a crime writer, the wonderful crime writer Patricia Conwell. Mm -hmm. And also it's from these these authors that I have I've I've developed my art, not that I've I've um copied their style, but I've I developed my own style and mm -hmm. way of writing about Barbados in the most fascinating way. And they say that maybe one day, I mean, I, I, I even felt afraid that it would have been embraced by, by the literary world in here in Barbados, but the book eventually won an award. And if that. Now, and now the sky is probably not the limit. We're going beyond that. You tell me you've been, um, you, you did the, the renowned British writer, Mr. Oh, Thornton. Yeah, Mr. Ian Thornton. Um, he, yeah, see, you know, see him on his Facebook quite recently, and he was saying Barbados. He loves Barbados. And um, he, he is, so he first wanted me, after he heard about my story, um, in which I went to Canada and, and was, uh, was invited there to the Toronto Urban Book Expo with this, with this novel. And, you know, when I had done my research, it was the only book from the Caribbean that was, that was um, featured there. And off you go to Canada. And there I went, but I was uh, barred from Canada because of my past, previous convictions. Right. Um, what, what made me become so interested in Canada? At the time, after my book was spotted on, on, on Instagram by Kaya Publishing, a wonderful lady by the name of Stacey Marie Robinson, mm -hmm. very th many thanks to her. Um, because during my incarceration, I, I have took on, despite it was in maximum security, I had taken on some studies. And I had have, I have done, completed the reintegration course from, that was brought here by Teacher Associates from Canada. And I did that course along with um, that course was followed by job etiquette and money management and so, so on. So you studied after all. I studied within prison. Yes. yes. Studying, studying. Yeah. And so when I was then invited to Canada, I was saying, well, I did the reintegration course, and, and you know, I think that you know that should be it's something really significant, yeah. and Canada would be a lovely place to go because maybe that's the same place that if it, if it didn't help assisted in my writing because some of the things that they had taught me. Um, on the reintegration course, right? You know, it was a lot to do with self-control and a lot to do with, with making choices in the future and mm -hmm. so on. You know, and completing the course was significant in my time at security. But you couldn't so, enter the country. You know, but then, you know, then, or then being barred from Canada was a, real, it was a blow. But I put that behind me, and I came back and I got one award, and if got some months later. And then Ian Thornton had heard about me, and he came here to Barbados, he interviewed me, and he went back to Canada and wrote an article in the Huffington Post. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that, that, post that I'm sure. I hope Barbados will be able to follow it. Yeah. I tried to get it exposed back then. Thing. But beyond that, you know, um, the book has been moving on. It's been yes. interviewed on several times. And one recently doing well on Davis Amazon. And it's on the sun. Yes, it's doing pretty well after some of the interviews um, that I've been receiving. But still, it has a long way to go for that yes. international exposure and local and um, global recognition, mm -hmm. and I, I will continue personally. Are you happy now, Wilmot Sinclair? <laughs> Have you found your place? 
in this world? Man, I, Carrie would say yes, I, I have found my place. Um, you know, life, life, life is, 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 let's say, it's not a storybook. It's the way I'm writing. Uh, you know, we, we face a lot of sorrows, you know, people are passing every day, people don't really. But I, I, I would say that I've, I've made, I've reached that point. I wish I, I believe that I've, I've done something for myself, not only for myself, for the world too as well. And for people, to, and for persons to come, young people. You know, I would hope that maybe my own son would, would recognize what his father, his father's done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, persons up there who feel hopeless or whatever that, you know, that there's no way out for you now. You know, I think that if, if you know, I once read a, 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 a statement by, by Martin Luther King, where he said, take one step in faith, you know, and the rest will follow. Mm -hmm. And I never thought that I would have been a, a published writer, but the day that I took that, that step, you know, after, after, the day that I decided, look, man, let me self-educate myself, let me, mm -hmm. let me read, let me see if I can do what the people up there have, have, have done or what they've achieved. Let me see if I can, I can still achieve it despite I'm not in institutions or, or, or accepted in the places that they may be. But I can still be a great person. And I would like that. That, that, that can inspire many of the young, young people up there, you know, even right in my neighborhood. Quite feel rather good now within my neighborhood. Do you spend time doing that? Yes, I spend time doing that. Um, I was invited to to a few schools, which I believe should be more, mm -hmm. because I, I find that you know the youth would, would relate to me and, and within my neighborhood. Agreed. A lot of the youth relate to me, and you know, and they show me a lot of love, and I try to show them a lot of love too. And any, anything that I can do to to guide them away from going the wrong path, I do that, and it, it is an honor when some of them come and the people buy bought a book from me in the, in you know that are normal, simple guys, block guys, grassroots people, you all kind of different people won't read it. Want but, read and people come at me and buy it, and if I, have, if I sign them a copy, you know, when, when I have, you know, it's, it's an honor to do that. It's similar to how, you know, I send a copy to a person in, in different color hall. Now, your son gets up one morning and he says to you, Dad, I ain't going to school today. Based on the story you shared with us this morning, what kind of father are you? Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to instill in him that he has to go to school today, mm -hmm. because I'm not saying that it's, it's life, life is, is, is not a bed of roses. I had a bed of thorns because of, of um, decisions that I have made Your as, choices. as a young person. Yeah. My choices. So I, um, I don't, I don't believe that that we can choose from a young age. I, I know that this is a concept now that we can choose from a young age, but I don't believe that. People, people are, are in their 20s and 30s and still not able to make correct choices. But um, what I would say is that it's still good to have a person behind you. It's still good to have someone there to tell you, um, well, you check yourself here, you're not right, or, or, or don't make that, that move, it's wrong. Right? I still believe that. I, I don't think that from a young age that we are capable.